My name is Daniel Posny, and this is called Shifting Perspectives. And the topic today is about uh, a trigger test. And I um, haven't heard this, this little phrase before, but that's kind of what I always think about how if I've had a reaction in the past, um, how do I test myself? So it's a trigger test. The same shit comes up and I see how I deal with it this time. It's kind of like what Ron Doss talks about in his Be Here Now book about the guy walking down the street and <clears throat> a guy comes up to him and he bumps his shoulder and they get into a fight or he throws a punch or something. But that practice is that that guy keep on going down that street and reacting in a, in a different way, choosing a different way to have more awareness, more consciousness. So that trigger test kind of tests my consciousness of where I'm at now. Before I get into that, I want to let you know uh, how we're all doing here and what's going on. Just a little status update for those of you that know uh, myself and Valerie, my wife. Uh, Valerie is doing great. Um, her health is awesome. And the only trouble that uh, she gets into is when she talks to people that don't support what she's doing. And other than that, everyone else is supporting her. Everyone else has amazing uh, tools and medicines and techniques and everything that are proven to work uh, through cancer to heal cancer. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, Chris B. Cancer. His name is Chris Wark and his wife. And he's just a, a wealth of information. So she's gathered so much through that. And then I've been working for an uh, alternative therapy uh, center for cancer called The Lodge at Sedona for about eight years. And I've gained a lot of understanding and compassion and empathy working with patients there. So between all that, it's just, um, we feel, feel very prepared and knowledgeable and wise about this. And so we're, we're going through the journey. <clears throat> kind of going, getting over, I guess, a cold. Just feels like a cold that's kind of in my throat right now. So pardon me for clearing that up. Um, in October, still have my men's retreat planned for that. <clears throat> It's going to be a four-day <clears throat> men's retreat, and uh, last time we did it, everybody had a great time of self-discovery and breath work and tools and practical information and getting out on the land and challenging ourselves and doing the cold water plunge and just brotherhood and fellowship and delicious food and it was in and sound healing. It was just fantastic. So really looking forward to that again. To get more information about that retreat, you can go to SedonaMensRetreats.com or you can just go straight to the, uh, the source of all the links, which is UltimatePotentialCoach.com, which is my site. All right, so let's get into this. <clears throat> Relationship trigger test. I'm just going to read through this to kind of get me back into the energy of it. I love relationship coaching and counseling. I love giving couples something richer, deeper, and more real than they're used to. There's a passion and truth of love that comes out. Like me, most of us in our early relationships, quote, fly blind until it either gets so bad or so good that we seek out other, some kind of counseling and new perspective. I've been fortunate to have had the experience of relationships that led me eventually to look at myself. That's a blessing for sure. So if any of my old relationships are watching this, thank you for watching and thank you for being in un unconditional love and thank you for showing up the way that you did. Um, you're not the problem. You were never the problem. And I just didn't know how to deal with, with my own insecurities. And I was living my life through my own childhood trauma. So you caused me to look at myself and to be the person that I am today. So for that, I, I thank you and I bless you and I love you. Um, so I get excited when I talk to couples that are really on the brink of things. Uh, I've got a couple couple couples that are really kind of in it and they've been kind of arguing and it's like their, their ego is against ego, like their, their hearts and their true selves are not even in the picture when they're together in this struggle. It's just this piece of them is out front speaking for them and they're in the back going, this sucks. I wanna just love this person. And I see that, I, I see that in the people because I've done it myself. And that's why I'm so um, grateful for any relationships. And there's very few, you know, most of my relationships were very beautiful and 
um, reached me where I could be met. But there were a couple that really challenged me in the trigger department. And I know what that feels like when I'm completely not there. And it's just my mind, my reactions, my beliefs speaking for me. So I love being in those um, counseling sessions. If the people are willing to learn, if they're willing to open up and they're um, receptive. And these couples that I'm working with, they're so receptive. They're so open and they're frustrated and they're pissed off, but they're receptive. It's like, it just warms my heart to, to see these people they're in the shit and they're going, tell me more. <laughs> I want to learn. I want to, I want to move behind beyond this and I need help. That is just the most powerful thing. So uh, moving on. Recently, I had a trigger test and a trigger test, I'll explain it this way, an emotional trigger that comes up that would normally cause a negative reaction. And the person, me, gets to test where they're at with it. <clears throat> like, the question is, you know, I worked on myself. How do I know that I've gone through this or that I've, I've healed this? Well, you're going to get tested. So um, it made me realize how I'm improved from the past insecurities that it would have pushed me into a downward emotional spiral. And wow, it was so hard to pull myself out of that. And sometimes I never did once it started. So a little bit about that trigger. Uh, well, it, was a, it wasn't really a trigger. It was a potential trigger. It's kind of like where I've explained this before, where the trigger or the reaction is kind of coming up from the depths of the, of the pond or the lake. And the lake is awareness, consciousness. And there's this bubble of reaction getting ready to, be, to surface. And you can feel it coming up, feel it coming up. And there, then there's this choice of you're going to launch or you're going to scrub the mission. <laughs> and I was telling you about a, an episode that I scrubbed the mission when I was riding in the car with my ex-wife. And that one, abort, abort. <laughs> but when we don't abort this, when we don't get some awareness about it, it just launches and we're going. At least, you know, that's how I was. I would just go and just, I would be really smart and very manipulative about how, you know, I want to get what I, I get what I wanted. But in this case, I had this trigger developing. And what happened was there was this, all these elements of the scene. It was this, and it was that, and I feel this way, and then this is, and she's doing this, and da da da, and all the stories start build up. And what, now that I look back on it, what was happening is a past story of abandonment. Let me see if I can look into that abandonment insignificance, not appreciated, not really, um, people aren't really considerate, that, that all that kind of thing. And that, you know, if you really take it in a dramatic way, it's kind of like this, people aren't considerate and I'm just, you know, it's that kind of thing. And, but instead of being there, I would get angry. And in that anger, that's what, you know, the trigger was coming up. And I felt all this, you know, you, you hear these thoughts and we have a choice that when these thoughts start to bubbling up the surface, we can, we can just, you know, like go arm in arm in it with them and just go with them. Or we can kind of go, what, hold on a second. What, oh, okay. Th this is really, this is the trigger right now. And we kind of get really conscious and present with this thing. And yeah, it's going to boil up. And, and I'm not saying not to let it boil up because it kind of needs to to kind of stir up all that stuff so that all that past hurt and heartache and that pain, like I'm already feeling the emotion of it right now. That feeling of abandonment that, you know, other people are leaving you to go do something else and, and you're not gonna be able to go to the beach with them or you've got to stay home or that kind of thing where you're kind of left out in the in alone. And like, I, I can still feel that emotion and what I was recognizing is that this is an old emotion. So as I'm sitting there, all these ruminations are going through my mind and I just breathe. And before I, you know, <clears throat> like the old me would have just like stormed down and had this reaction and blah, blah, blah. Now I just breathe into it. I go, okay, man, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel this. Okay. What is this little story that's trying to get my attention? So it's, hasn't broken the surface, but it's, it's definitely there. 
but I'm not allowing myself, my reactions to, to take hold of me. I'm just feeling it. And then I ask myself, okay, what is this? What's this feeling? Yeah, it's the same old shit. It's the same old shit that was in my list of things. And I go, okay, now I know that, you know, I, the presence of me starts to have more control over this because now there's an awareness, there's an understanding that this is, a, this is an old uh, reaction. So the reaction doesn't have control over me. I've got control over the reaction in awareness. So now I'm going, okay, look at this, look at the scene. She's doing this and I'm over here, you know, it's that kind of thing. And I'm realizing that there's this victim consciousness going on right now. And I'm just kind of tripping out on that, that, that there's this old feeling coming up. Like the, it's a different scene, but all the elements, the emotional elements are all there from an old past thing. You know, she betrayed me. She left me for someone else all that kind of stuff. So here is the, let's see, I'm going to the notes here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, so I stopped and breathed. And then the next thing that I did to, to put it in a better way, I stopped defending my mind. Stop defending your mind. Stop, just stop defending your mind. If I like, if it needs to be a song, stop defending your mind. Stop defending your mind. It's gotta be that kind of thing. And then your mind wants to go, yeah, but stop defending your mind. Stop defending, I needed to have, just keep on telling myself, Breathe, stop defending your mind. The mind keeps on saying these things, stop going along with it. It's really not working for you. I mean, it's not your, it's not your best friend here. It's not defending you, it's defending it. That's the critical piece that I wish we could all get is that your mind and your beliefs and your reactions and your triggers are not to defend you. It's to, to defend it, the mind. This just blew my mind. Like if you could really grasp that, to understand that, that whatever your mind tells you about this situation, it's for itself. It's not saying you'd be more loved if you had a reaction. <laughs> so stop defending your mind. And then I went into how am I feeling? And then once I've noticed what the feeling was, what the belief was, <clears throat> like the thing was, um, I'm not loved or I'm not feeling um, appreciated or they don't care about me, all those things. Is that really true? And what was really true, what was really factual is people were just having a good time. And like every other instance where I had, like maybe, I, you know, I remember like being at a, a, a dancing at some club or something and the people that I went there with are all dancing and uh, I really don't want to be there anymore because, you know, I'm insensitive and I can only handle so much of this, which I didn't understand before. But here I am, I'm in this place and I don't really want to be here. And they don't want to go. And so I'm stuck here and I'm feeling, oh, you know, I'm a, a victim in this. That's what it brought up for me is that old stuff. So I have to ask myself this belief that I have that they're having a good time to, you know, despite me or to, to, say, yeah, yeah, look at us having a good time. I want to look at just the facts. The facts were everyone out here is having a good time and I've got a reaction to it out of some spontaneous trigger. That's, that's what was true. And then I breathe and I realized that the next one is to realize that the story has been created with no facts, just like arbitrary stuff, just thoughts of the mind, not really with any facts. All this was built upon the energy of the trigger theme of my dream of insecurities or my minds. So here's the other part. Your beliefs may turn out to be true. They may be doing it in hostility. That, that could be a truth. But most of the times it's not. Most of the times people are just doing what they do. It's just that between you and them, there's a certain trigger between you that you have. So, but fixing the symptoms like having everybody stop having a good time and then leave with you so that you could be happy, that's not really gonna fix. That's gonna fix the symptom, but not the real cause. So you wanna fix the cause. So realize that the, 
the trigger is all being developed in this holodeck, what I spoke about before, the consciousness holodeck, in the holodeck or the room that you normally live in. The one about, you know, feeling insignificant and insecure and abandoned and all that, then it's just going to be your self, it's just kind of going to feel the energy of that room or that holodeck. Stop giving your mind permission to sabotage you and your heart. That's, a, that's the one that I really need to look at is that I'm allowing my mind to come in, speak for me, and just ruin the situation. <laughs> so there's the technique for that. <clears throat> I realize now that I was playing out my life through the lens of my own childhood trauma and unmet needs. So I'm sure I've gone into that, and, you know, about what that was. No need to go into that again, maybe later. Um, but the thing is that even though there may have been a wake of pain and gratitude about my past relationships and how they showed up, then my determination to, de to continue towards more light is stronger than the guilt that I carried around. So what that's saying is that so I, I could have stayed in that, God, I really destroyed some relationship. Man, I caused so much pain. I'm just, I just can't do relationships. The light within me that is much stronger than the pain is the one that I, that I choose to allow to, to guide me. So, you know, I've got a lot of stuff in my past that I, that if I allowed it to come up and run my life, which it did for about 10 years, I was just wrapped up in guilt and about my marriage and my kids and all that stuff. And I finally just allowed myself to carry the light forward. And even though I had lots of things to feel shitty about, I needed to allow that light to just say, yep, that may be true, but you were doing the best that you could with the heart and the consciousness and the awareness that you had at the time. You couldn't have done any better with who you were back then. <coughs> so how did I do on that whole thing? Well, I think I did really, really good. Um, the, the situation was all created so perfectly, all the elements of this, like it was amplified of anything that I've experienced before in that particular theme of abandonment, insecurities, and uh, not feeling significant and all that stuff. Like everything was so amplified and I felt it. I really felt it in my body. I felt the emotion of it. And I let it sit and I let myself be content. I let myself be content with everybody having a great time and me having a great time where I was. I didn't want to be where everybody was and I wanted to be where I was. And it was a, it was a more comfortable place to be and it brought up the trigger that needed to come up. So you might say, yeah, but you got a trigger and you were upset. No, I wasn't really upset. And I didn't really have a trigger, but it was just the it was the, um, the energy of it was starting to come up. I didn't have a reaction about it, but it definitely kind of started to show itself. And that's what I really want. When I know that I've done some work on myself, I want that kind of the energy of that trigger to just start to come up to the surface. And then before it breaks the surface, I want to meet it with loving awareness. So it's like this. Here it comes up to the surface. There's the camera. Comes up to the surface like this. And then the loving awareness meets it and say, yeah, I know, come here. Come here and get love. Come here and get awareness and understanding. And that draws back down and we get to experience more love. So that's it. That's all I got for now. I um, hope that helps. Uh, I know that um, a lot of people want to have like a, a practice to deal with their reactions and their relationships. If you practice this, this um, trigger awareness, you start to open yourself to more and more love in that person that you're in relationship with. And that, by the way, this is intimate and otherwise. That person that you're in relationship with gets to see more of you. Otherwise, they're just seeing the egoic, the, the reaction part of you, the, the positioning part of you. And then you get to experience more love that way. And the only part of you that doesn't want to do this, the egoic identity, egoic mind. Thank you. I love you. Bless you. Next time.